Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Steam is adding 12 new currencies, but there's still no love for the dollar due. Descent, Underground, hits early access! And some people have a problem with this? Question mark. Running a gaming rig with 100 plus CPUs? Well, we have some good news for you. And you can't fix a dead albatross, but you can sure as hell try to fix a busted raven. Clueless blogger is clueless. The Steam machines continue to fuel more pointless articles. <clears throat> and I'll talk to my spiel. The pre-alpha, with more gameplay to it than many finished games out there, has a spoopy event. That's racist. <laughs> I'm Ben Stone, here at LGC Actual, switching the bits this nightmare fuel joined every week by our team Canadian podcaster. Hello. Massa Sveg, and all the way from my road to go. Sup, bitches. Pedro Mateus, and together with Chat Realm Dynamic, joining us live around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time, which is about to change, I hear. We do form just a bit of a cocaine Voltron. Um, before we get started, gentlemen, we got a huge show tonight. But we do like to see what's going on in each other's life sure. organs. Um, P Man, I heard you had some things going on. Uh, not really for my end. I mean, Netflix is now available in Portugal, and it's about on par with the Canadian offering. So Woo-hoo! I guess I'm keeping my VPN for the time being. What's up, Jay, baby? Uh, well, it, it finally happened after a week of having this system running the new the new sauce with the uh, i seven sixty seven hundred k. Chrome has finally found some way to consume thirty two gigabytes of RAM. <laughs> it's astounding. It's amazing. I had to kill nine it. Jeez. Ben, what about you? Um, not a whole lot. I mean, if you're listening to this, uh, I'm doing some audio ass hattery, still playing around with the uh, guys um, and gals, boys and goils out there. Five dudes. Five dudes, baby. Giggity. If you know of a better solution than Skype, we're forced to use this black box of Microsoft Note because it's the best quality we found. Don't say mumble. We know mumble sucks bulls. Sorry, we've tried oh, it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Been there, done that, t-shirts. Send us some hate mail. Give us some uh, suggestions or two. And we'd love them because we're getting really tired of that. But if you can hear everyone, that means it's working. Just like the horse, baby. Yeah, no, the horse is actually, it got an update on the androids. It's our Steam Works update. update. Oh, my ben, God, download like this. What, free Steam mobile app? Oh, yeah, we already have that. But wait, there's something new. Trade and market confirmations. Now you can confirm trades and market sales through the Steam mobile app. Ensure items never leave you. Basically, they're saying, don't get hacks with bra. I'm not really big with the um, CSGO trading and all that, but I think it's kind of neat. You know, if somebody hacks into your business, you do have this enabled. And if they try to clear out your gift inventory, this is going to give you a notification. It's like, hey, man, do you do you want to give this gift away? And be like, nope. Then they can't mm-hmm. do it. I think that's kind of neat. Yep. Yeah, maybe. I yeah, don't know. It, it- it is. I mean, it's it's cool that they're putting the security features of the mobile app like in the first and foremost. It used to be when you logged in, you had to dig around a bit for the uh, for the Steam Guard stuff. Now that's front and center. They have this now. So Valve is starting to get a little little teensy teensy tiny bit concerned about the user security and the user experience. But uh, is, is is it too little, too late, Pedro? With a hundred and fifty million active accounts, they probably should have already considered revamping the Steam security a bit, especially when a couple of months ago you got that whole thing that if you tried to reset your password and you were given a confirmation code, and if you left the confirmation code box blank, it would accept it anyway and would let people reset their password. Now, if you have Steam Guard, you can use the uh, Steam app on Android or iOS and uh, you get that extra layer of security without having to fiddle around with the menus and trying to figure out where the hell they had Steam Guard. Because, yeah. like Jordan said, it's two- now front and center. <laughs> yeah, two-factor off all the things. If you're not using it already, yep. the hell's wrong with you? It's a little bit more inconvenient, but you can have a super shitty password, and you still won't be able to get hacked because they need that second token on your mobile, which is on your person. Uh, but up next... Passing the uh, buck. Uh, now, this is not from us. This is freely available <laughs> on the um, interwebs. 
Turns out that mm-hmm. uh, the Steams, they're going to be adding 12 new currencies. Indian rupee, Hong Kong dollar, Taiwanese, <laughs> Chinese one, Swiss franc, and a bunch of other things. But, 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 we got a lot of friends in space, Australia. And at this rate, yeah. um, you know, they're, they're going to uh, end up paying no dollar like, Yeah. The, by the time they add the AU currency... They're going to be paying with galactic fucking credits, man. I mean, this is just goddamn ridiculous. Um, but I, 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 why? Why would they do that? At, at the same time, you have, you have to consider that once they get the Australian currency, they can start paying outrageous prices for video games in their native currency so they at least don't get slapped with the exchange rate. But it's it's a it's a bit of a shame that the Taka isn't getting included either because Orn's gonna have to settle with uh, paying for games with rupees. But you know he can just go and break some pots and cut down some grass and be able to afford his game. So it's all good. Yeah, this is still Valve running damage control from their update a couple of months ago from when they stopped people from buying games in one region. Let's say you were in Germany and you couldn't have all those hyper-violent games that make you a killer. Uh, <laughs> you could, say, change your location to Poland and you could get those games just no questions asked. Steam what, what, tried what, what, to prevent what games that are those, Pedro? Is that Powerpuff Girls Defenders of Townsville? <laughs> that just makes about me want to every choke a bit. single first-person shooter game you can think of. Uh, so Valve tried to put a stop to that because legal issues in the EU, they keep companies like Microsoft and Google keep getting sued because of that shit. So Valve didn't want that. So they tried to put a stop to it and they forgot a couple of currencies. But you know what? what They didn't forget the people who pre-order Steam machines. But what about Trine 3, Pedro? What about it? (laughs) Uh, Apparently, Mr. What's his name? Julio Franco doesn't know who the steam machines are for if anyone in chat realm would like to elucidate them this article can be found on techspot.com there'll be a link in the show notes but yeah he says that alienware steam machine is on the right track but he can wholeheartedly recommend it yet and he goes through a list of concerns quote unquote and while I was reading the article, there were two words that kept popping into my mind. Cognitive dissonance. And there was that specific bit where he says the Steam Machine proper, the Alienware Steam Machine proper is not worth it. And people should just get the Alpha. When every other outlet that has reviewed the Alpha says that it's annoying as balls because you get all the Windows error messages and update things that you cannot reach with your controller and that the steam machine running steamos is actually a much more well integrated kind of experience so to speak yeah and i I mean if you you look at the comments of this article they're all oh my god why don't you why you use linux why use we use windows brah don't use linux which is which is really dumb because this this is this is a console from the get-go running linux this should not be news to you. This was the talk of the town for literally two years. Um, the 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 reviewer does bring up some issues with the areolas, and we talked about that last week. Um, or was it the week before? I honestly don't remember. All these shows are a big fucking blur to me because I'm drunk half the time. But um, uh, the the one legitimate complaint in there, despite all the all just the horrible horrible shit in this, is that <clears throat> the games people want to play aren't necessarily there. But don't worry. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, what what am I talking about? Um, yeah, there, there's like thousands of games on SteamOS, and they all suck. But don't don't worry because Eon's gonna be finished porting the uh, The Witcher three soon, and you can you can play that <laughs> on your Steam machine. Okay, all right, all right, I just gotta fucking chime in on this business because right, go, go nuts. <sighs> to quote, some games and that should work with it still don't. I tried playing Trine three only to get stuck at the choose resolution and it didn't work. All right. Small problem. Um, did did you just bitch about the Trine Three beta not working? The beta, not not the full, the one that is in testing right now. No, no, you didn't, Brad. No, you didn't. You used it as a fucking example, and I quit reading your article right there. You f- mothering hack. 
Yeah, Seriously. it wasn't just that. It was that and the argument about Windows games not working. That it's an argument I still can't wrap my head around. Did these people honestly think when they got their Xbox One that all their Windows games would work there too? I mean, it is an x86-64 processor running some manner of Windows, right? Nah, man. Nah, it's lies, man. <laughs> uh, well, well I, I, and Ben, you, you bring up a good point in, in the show notes about how they're really pitching this about, oh, it's bringing the PC gaming experience to the living room. And Valve's language is kind of confusing regarding this issue. I mean, uh, I mean, it really is. Thing. I mean, uh, it's good. you know, P Man said, you know, it was like, that's, that's actually a very fucking valid point, Ben. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people, but the thing is, people do not view the average Jew on the street or Joette, the Valve, the Steam machine, as a console, they view it as a Windows PC or just a personal computer that's going to go into their home entertainment system. Serum, I like that system, Serum? and allow them to play Show their title. PC games. And that's you know, kind of get, kind of maybe want to ding Val for that one just a little bit, maybe. I, I, I mean, hell, even yeah. if you look at the uh, the Alienware page for like their comparison versus the Alpha and the Steam machine. It really doesn't paint the Steam Machine in a very positive light. I don't know, man. It, 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 the, the... It, it, it's, it seems to like indicate, oh, yeah, oh, you get full Windows experience, all these applications. The yeah, Steam Machine, you get a thousand games and more integrated consoles. And uh, Matty so... in Chat Realm kind of brings up the point that he doesn't get who it is for either. Matty, this is for console gamers, the people that buy their 400 five hundred dollar yeah. uh, yeah. closed it's, black boxes it's, to play their games this is it's, exactly it's supposed to be a gateway drug and targeting yeah. i don't know i mean it's, it's just a bit of a market. mixed message a lot of people do not understand that the steam box is supposed to be a console and then you know valve needs to kind of sort that out unless they mm-hmm. yeah. you know steam os is going to be like oh yeah that was the thing anywho was... up next it... blind oh yes cry cry wolf so, you you know that game Raven's Cry that, you know, doesn't really work, period. No, nope, never well, heard of it. The rea- reality prompt is saying, we're trying to, we're, we're making a Raven's Cry Enhanced Edition, but we're actually going to push, we're actually going to bring this one to completion, you guys. It's actually going to work. It's going to have, like, Trust skill us. systems and enhanced stuff and crafting and, oh my god, it's going to be amazing. Here's the deal, though. This game has been out for two years. It sucked. You lost all the goodwill you could have possibly had for this game. What makes you think? No, man. You, you any, anyone would buy this. Marketing again. strategy. All right, you release a busted game, right? Uh-huh. Then, then you abandon mm-hmm. it. But we're all cool now, Brian. I mean, we're, we're going to go hang out at the pool and um, have some sexy time together. Really good fucking luck with that. Something I want to address is um, from, uh, let's see, right here, Rock, Paper, Shotgun. No firm word yet on when Vendetta will launch, but it will be a free update to the folks who blah, 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 and add Linux support, Brad. Um, to, uh, to, to be fair, to be fair, it never really worked on Linux. So you could you could make the argument that there, it didn't really have Linux support <laughs> from the get-go. Well, I mean, if you're making that argument, you can say it never really worked on Windows, son. I mean, true, true. okay. <laughs> All I'm saying is you know nothing, Alice O'Connor. I mean, it, was, uh, it wasn't a day one release for... Basically, I mean, they attempted fact-checking because, in all fairness, it doesn't show the Linux logo on the page, but it has been um, that's runnable. That's because Valve actually nuked it. And so that's definitely a thing, but uh, hey, listen. Oh, yeah, no. So this is actually kind of cool. I came across this on our Linux. Uh, you can get shell access on your Steam link because it's, ru- it's running like a full ARM distribution of like Debian. So you can absolutely, if you pop in a USB with a specific directory structure and a file present, uh, it'll it'll boot and you can get to a shell. And it's it's running like a full real boy Linux. Uh, if you want to futz with it and get stuff working with it, go right on ahead. I mean, if you, if you have and a link, I know I'm going to be a screen that that I, I, I like it ARM was... computers. I am an ARM guy, so this this is this is perfect. I wanted this from the get go. And I don't know who at Valve thought they were being clever by having the SSH password default to Steam Link 123, but that didn't fly for long. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure they put it there so that anyone who is actually trying to tinker with it could actually get in. Let's, 
Because, I mean, the guys who work at Valve are a bunch of nerds. They know people would want to yeah. fuck around with this. <laughs> and, I, I mean, making the, making the Steam Link hackable is a great way to increase the number of people who buy it. Because, hey, yep. I can customize it. I can throw my own shit on here, and it will work. But, Jordan, what if I'm a Windows user? Well, that, that's fine. You shouldn't be doing this anyway. It's cool kids club only. Oh, uh, that seems legit. <laughs> uh, I, I really don't have a fucking problem with it. I, I think it's a brilliant thing they did. And... If we were taking the fucking Pepsi challenge, and you would ask me last month, and I, and I said, is it a real boy, a full blown um, ARM implementation of Linux? I was like, nah, it's fucking Android. Would have lost that bet. But. Yeah, it's actually Debian. But 74. hey, promises, promises. You know what the problem is with backing crowdfunding games like on Kickstarter and Indiegogo? It's a crapshoot. Is that you can never really ascertain exactly what you're going to get and this is a glaring example this is the uh update number 74 for divinity original sin and they say yeah we're going to release the enhanced edition and uh, it's going to be available for windows xbox one and the ps4 on somewhat of pc November, ps4 or... xbox one Mac and Linux yeah. will be right on their tail. Well, Pedro, I don't see yeah, what the problem is. A, because they, uh, no, 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 no. Hey, guys, I mean, they, they released the original one just right after they finished the uh, PC and Mac of the non-enhanced edition, no. right? Yeah. No, they did yeah. not. What, I mean, they, they didn't? did release no, 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 the Mac and, and, and they, they announced the sequel to Divinity Original Sin before they yep. even finished the Linux port. So you know what? Go fuck yourselves. Fuck yourselves. Yeah, right seriously. Right up, you stupid monkey fuck assholes. Fuck these guys up the ass. <laughs> LGC cares, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Okay. Descent. Let's talk about bird culture, though. This is um, a true first, but you remember Descent. If you're old enough, if you're my vintage, six degrees of freedom, pew, pew, and all the pews. It was definitely a thing back in the day in the DOS ages, as we like to call them. But it's currently out as an early access version. It uh, will retail for twenty nine ninety nine. It's what they say, currently 17% off at twenty four eighty nine. wet, stinky caches. It needs a little bit of work, but um, some people are going to have a problem with this, Brad. And I hate what, to say, what's that? Well, um, uh, all right, I'm just I'm spitballing here. Um, the fine folks who back the Kickstarter, uh, in order to get the alpha, you know, it was like the YOLO swag early access, right? Mm-hmm. 80 wet, mm-hmm. stinky caches they had to throw into their face organs. They're like, okay, you you get the uh, like super. You, you guys are the elite eighty. Fuck yeah, you love our fucking game. You're supporting us and all that. That's brilliant. Here you oh. go. <laughs> they gave it to him for thirteen days before they dropped this business on early access <laughs> for the price of twenty four eighty nine. Not only not not at that's, 17% that's a, off. That's, le- that's more than a third. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> it's like, almost a third exactly. All I'm saying. <laughs> Bird culture, dick move, son. Um, P-Man. You can probably... I mean, you probably have enough digits in your hands to count the amount of studios or development teams who actually did crowdfunding, developed, and released a video game without dick moves and or underhanded tactics. You probably have enough digits. I don't, but you do. (laughs) Moral of the story you, you, is... You can use your toast, stop, Pedro. That's fun. Stop paying for promises. Do not. And, 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 and I mean, like, this shit will keep happening because there's no reason for it not to happen. Valve won't do anything about it because they get their money. Kickstarter won't do anything about it because they make their money. Joe Consumer won't do anything about it because they don't back games on Kickstarter. They wait for it to go on Steam Early Access and they buy it yep. then. And the people who actually backed it on Kickstarter can't do anything about it because they got their product. They can't... They've forked out $80 for something that they could have paid 30 for. And by the way, Brick Simulator is now available on Desura. Sorry to our uh, Brick Starter backers. No, uh, yeah, at least yeah, we're not getting hey, at least we're not getting paid either. Yeah, that's true. Um yeah, I mean, Strider, you're absolutely right. It's not about getting something earlier unless it's a fucking reward tier for getting something early. English son. Up next. It's a big update. Up next, we have some besieged. Yes, as you can see on the screen people. right there or if you're in you're listening to us on the audio version. It's the third major update for Besieged version 0.20, and it has the update from Unity 4 to Unity 5. 
This is yet another game and a very good Unity game. What the hell were they playing? Access. Okay, I understand. This is recorded in an i7 uh, 4770? <laughs> 4790 uh, oh, I was about probably. to say, because even with my 8150 with a 980, I can run this thing at 4K <laughs> at 60 frames. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly what kind of resolution. That's probably downscaled 4K or something. I don't know. But yeah, it's supposed the video that they have on that page is supposed to illustrate just how much better Unity 5 is when it comes to performance. Of course, that is in Windows. In Linux, unless you code OpenGL specifically to be multi-threaded, yeah, it's not going to code itself. Sorry. Who, who, do, who does that, Pedro? Really <laughs> Absolutely no one for the looks of it. <laughs> But, I mean, if you haven't fucked around with um, Besiege, it's definitely a fantastic game. I don't know. I mean, yeah, they, they, they got some big bugs in Unity 5 they were talking about. Like, we got to get them crushed. I mean, we're talking, they were saying, we need to get in touch with the guys and gals at Unity to help fix this, that type of shit. Yeah. Um, I think one of them was a symmetrical vibration glitch, which would be a bitching band name. Wobbly well, well, um, wheels. Yeah, and little things like that that could get sorted. Um. I hope they do, because this is something that should definitely come out of early access. It's a brilliant fucking game. Um, mm. My mom was a huge fan of this, and she gave it to my nieces and bought them all copies. And she's like, go learn how to, you know, murder people. Oh, well, yeah. you, you heard it here. It's got the Momstone seal of approval, so go buy this yes. shit. Super sweet. Ben's mom Momstone hates everything. So. approved. <laughs> Especially Ben. So. <laughs> um, but, but you know who doesn't hate us? Our lovely Patreons. We have wonderful wonderful human beings who are stupid enough to give us money every single week we're at 129 dollars 49 cents george and show Jordan, they're what, not what, what? stupid just because no one has ever loved you that that doesn't <laughs> they're not stupid they're, they're loving I, I know it confuses you when people show affection towards the work you do they're not stupid well this 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 concept confuses and infuriates me Jordan Smith. What we do work. No, check this out, man. We got some new Patreons this week, didn't we? Yeah. Who'd we get? Uh, Mike, Mike, Michael P, Jeremy C, and Kim O. All tossed oh, us some shit. wet stinky. We're a little over twenty dollars away from that Linux Gamecast Weekly Daily Wednesday show that Pedro and Ben are itching to start recording. Linux so, Gamecast I mean, Weekly Daily Wednesdays, P-Man, it's going to be a thing. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, every time at around Wednesday, there's this big news story that comes up or this big controversy that shows up in the Linux world, and we want to talk about it, but we can't yet. But you guys and gals keep being awesome, helping us out. I yep. mean, it, definitely yeah. at the end of the day, I, the biggest thing, here's the biggest thing, it's not the five cents or the ten cents or a buck a show, it's the... Fuck. All it's right. the it's, numbers. It's the registration. It's the, the registration. Numbers. That's the way I am. And I was like, God, I got to register for... Patreon's pretty fucking painless to register for. All right? Uh, yeah. That, yeah, it is. I, I'm just speaking for personal experience because I learned about Patreon through other shows I watched. And I'm like, hey, help us out in the show. I want to help them out because I don't want them to have 15 million fucking ads during the show. And mm -hmm. my biggest mental block was like, God, I'm Brought to you by Raven's Cry Enhanced Edition. I, I don't want to have to go through that registration. Patreon's pretty simple Make with that. Another fucker, fucking you can use all your business website. and all that. So, um, yeah, keep being awesome. Yeah. Shot Realm. Yeah. And, you, you, yeah. you, got, you got some lovely benefits, too. You can watch our Let's Plays early, get get access to show notes. That's you can get a custom like Nippy Form title. we just recorded a new trying again. Oh yeah, no. And if, if 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 you're if you're fiscally irresponsible enough, you can even be on the show. No one's taking us up on this, but it's possible. You can do it. Only if it's only for one week, it still counts. <laughs> so, uh, but up next, regular news. We talk about NASA drivers and how they'll never get finished. Hashtag Cyrix. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your good old regular Linuxy news. And in true LGC tradition, we talk about drivers right at the start. Jordan. That's that's right. If you got a Radeon SI card, which is basically any non-mobile 7000 series or up, you now have ARB Texture View enabled in Mesa. You know, which is which is great considering it's an OpenGL 4.3 extension. Except, how, how, guys, guys, how, how, how's it about we get that uh, GL Arab tessellation shader nice and uh, working on our 600 before we start implementing That's newer assuming. and newer and newer? 
that's assuming the door, AMD's door. devs can get tessellation working without the graphics card shitting all over itself. Oh, look at you optimistic motherfuckers. AMD <laughs> still needs to figure out how to open GL, bruh. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that, that's not AMD devs, man. That's that's the community. Maybe they can figure that shit out. But you know, you know, speaking of, speaking of rendering and software, Intel made an interesting commit to Mesa. They right. have a new software renderer out. It's called OpenSWR. And you might be thinking, uh, well, you got your L, you got your LLBM pipes, you got your um, you got what was that other fucking one called? Those in the freaking news. Vesa. Uh, yeah, Vesa. Why do we need another software renderer? Well, you, well, you stupid slut. Um, if you have a gaming PC with over 100 CPUs, this is the software renderer for you. This is primarily for scientific-based applications where, for whatever reason, you have tons and tons of CPUs and no GPUs, and you get pretty good open, you get markedly improved OpenGL performance, but it's not really much of a gaming application. I don't know, man. I, I mean, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, unless you need to get the exact physics correct and you, you don't have, you don't want to spend the billions of dollars. Maybe you have a Beowulf cluster. Remember those? Get off my lawn. And you need that floppy purple 18 inch dildo physics just right. But the reason I did put this in the show notes is we do not know what type of fuckery, ladies and gentlemen, will come from this am i am i crazy j man i i mean it, it might be possible with like these zen cpus having supposedly 32 physical cores with or 30 <laughs> 16 cores 32 with hyper threading this may be something that may be of use if you for whatever reason have to render shit on cpu um and they do use dfx cpus as an example in this mm-hmm in this case but yeah uh this when i saw this i'm like oh so that's what intel has been doing instead of supporting OpenGL four point something in mesa yeah on honestly i'd rather them focus their efforts on a solid vulcan implementation but oh, speaking of speaking which speaking of vulcan yes so uh someone on linux our linux underscore gaming brought this up there's a new page on lunarg.com forward slash vulcan Again, links in the show notes. And they say Valve and Lunar G are working closely with Kronos to provide Vulkan developers with open source tools. These tools and first drivers are expected to be available for Vulkan developers during 2015. Valve is sponsoring Lunar G to provide open source tools, a prepackaged SDK, and technical support for game developers bringing their 3D engines to the new Vulkan API. See, this whole prepackaged SDK thing is kind of amazing. Especially for developers looking for an easy way to implement Vulkan into their games and their engines without having to go through all the OpenGL bullshit. Jordan, now, what, Jordan, Lunar. pop caller, what about DX12, bro? I'm going to download more RAM uh, to my um, X yeah, station. You know, you know, D- DX12 is coming with Lion. They're, 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 they're working on that. And once that gets implemented, it's going to outperform the DX12 implementation on Windows. So, uh, but What's his Vulkan sorry, thing? I've never heard of it. That's DirectX 11. But um, L- Lunar G are the guys uh, you might have remembered them from Glassy Mesa a couple years ago, and I was a bit, I was wondering what actually happened to that. So I went over to their GitHub page. We haven't seen a commit from them since like July of 2014. So I'm curious if any of those changes were actually upstreamed into Mesa proper, uh, or may- maybe they just Valve said, you know what, stop working on Glassy Mesa. We want you working on Vulkan because they were doing yeah. stuff for Intel's Vulkan implementation. So how to bring <laughs> how to bring your <laughs> API to Vulkan? Bend yeah, over, that's a little your rundown and... of their of the interface that game developers will see once they'll have the Vulkan SDK available to them. There's a nice video there, so if you're a game developer, Terry, if you're watching this, go on over yeah, there right now, it. sign he's up for the thing. The you'll probably get a lot of spam, but you'll get an invite once the actual SDK is out. Yeah, but you guys, gotta start working on that uh, Vulkan implementation, man. Make a break, baby. Yeah. Make it or break it. So you may remember just a couple of minutes ago, Jordan was talking about all those 32 core CPUs from AMD coming to the corporate market. Yeah, so this is the Zen and K12 designs have been completed and they have been taped out. So, yeah, everything's on track to getting the release out by 2016 and 2017. There's a bit of leeway there. Uh, this, this article, uh, it comes from WCCF Tech, so take it for what it is. 
But it would be nice if those Summit Ridge FX processors, which I'm guessing are the consumer versions of these on architecture, if besides supporting the of besides supporting DDR4 and multi-threading, they had the performance to rival Intel's offerings. Because as it currently stands, Intel is kicking everyone's ass and they get to name their prices. So if <clears throat> AMD released a processor that could rival the 5960X at about half the price, that would be Pedro, a Pedro, you win. forgot. Uh, that, uh, I'm uh, sorry, uh, we're not competing on price, Pedro. Yeah, uh, AMD clearly said, we're, we're not going to compete on price. And if you're wondering about uh, the legitimacy of the WCTF tech, uh, it's like it's three a, weeks it's ago. A LinkedIn post. Yeah, three yeah. weeks ago, they were like, hey, this, this has already been taped up. Um, kind of looking forward to it, kind of banking on that, because... If it's not the case, I'm going to have to go Team Blue with the J-Man who just picked up his uh, super sexy... Uh, <laughs> yeah. spending $300 on a motherboard. I know, yeah. uh, it's going to be brilliant. And this guy, like, goodness. Uh, I, I kind of hope it works out. I don't like the... We- uh, if it's, like, second quarter 2016, I, I can see it, but it is going to have to curb stomp Intel offerings and maybe not half the price, but just a little bit below the price, but I was doing some research because, uh, what did you say, uh, Jim? What, what was Cyrix doing? No, uh, <laughs> I'm you misspelled your face, Ven. Yeah, right. Um, mm. via technologies about Cyrix, but that, that kind of reminded me a lot of people get off my lawn time, uh, think that you know, AMD, they're the ones that caused Intel to cut the prices. No, it was Cyrix. Cyrix never licensed anything from Intel, they reverse engineered it. Mm-hmm. And they caused the original price drop, and eventually they uh, sued Intel for the Pentium Pro architecture, and apparently Good. Intel was like, oh, yeah, you- shit, and all this business, and they licensed it out, but they're no longer around. But I do remember the good old bad days, the horrible days of, like, 98% Intel-compatible chips. That was oh, yeah. a different <laughs> time. Well, but, I mean, I, I I had a Thuban, and I was kind of dealing with those missing instruction sets. So open man, Pandora, <laughs> Pandora Live. Oh, that's worth telling about the open Pandora handheld and the Pyra. Pyra Blaze, baby, the prototypes from the very first 420 Blaze it! 18 units will be prepared. 10 will survive. Go to developers. The other eight are available for sale. Only for 1,400 euros, P-Man. It's a fucking steal. Uh, I have a shield tablet. All right. Wait, in fact, I got two. But shield no, tablets. no, no, man. Wham! This is like three times the size. It has a folding screen, runs full Linux. and uh, <laughs> uh, Okay, running full Linux, maybe, but even then. No, um, you remember the original, uh, what was it? Uh, Open Pandora. Open Pandora. Open Pandora. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is their prototyping, and it's they've already completely sold out of it, but they're going to be opening it up. Um, after the initial prototype run is done, I mean, it's a neat piece of kit. It's a very hobbyist type of, you have to be a very particular type of person. It runs narrow, full, narrow, narrow field. full Linux. I mean, unfortunately, this thing is still using the OMAP, uh, 4400, I think it was. Uh, I don't think it was yeah. a 40, was it 4400 from TI, but TI is no longer making these chips. So, yeah. You know, Texas Instrument and all that. I mean, I, I do have... Uh, yeah, that that, that OMAP was pretty badass, so... They say that the reservation for the first 200 units, just the reservation, will cost you 290 euros. Mm-hmm. The actual price will obviously be higher than that. You see, this shield tablet that I have right here... Blam! ...cost me 299 euros. It plays a fucking hell of a lot more games in your Pyra. It doesn't run actual Linux, but it runs Android. You want to compete Super with Tux that? Super Cart, man. I, I want to play Super Tux Cart while I'm on the bus on my open Pandora with its little itty bitty thumb keys. Anyway, check that but out. Those guys have been doing a good job, and don't let that price scare you. <laughs> uh, Speaking uh, yeah. of spoopy, spooky events. It was a goose. Yeah, so this is the Unreal Tournament 4. It's got a new build out for Halloween. It's got some new skins. Uh, all the uh, Some of the aesthetics and the character models have oh. been changed to reflect the Halloween ness uh, of the event itself. And they've tweaked some of the guns, they've rebalanced a couple of things. Hey and man, you can also spooky get some version specific... of Facing Worlds. I'm sold. 
Yes. <laughs> you get like a full moon and a witch uh, flying on a rocket the, uh, <laughs> over the, it. The railgun is replaced but, with yeah. spooky fish. From you get some Park. specific unlocks that you get to keep, if you, which will only be available during the spoopy event. So if you're currently into the um, Unreal Tournament 4 pre-alpha thing, Give this a but go. Pedro, how, how much will I skins. have to pay for this incredible piece of kit? Absolutely nothing. You can just that, that makes download no sense. the source. Next, next you're going to you tell me download, that they're going to give the engine away for you free. You can literally go and download the source for the engine and then build the game from source if you want. Or if you're lazy like me, you can simply download the binaries that they have for free on their forums. Nothing else. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, it's it's good that they're keep they keep on putting shit in Unreal Tournament. That's all I gotta say. It's open source. It is a full professional quality first person shooter. Go download it, play it, love it. But now we have non advanced technology. This is Worms, and we've talked about this in the past. It is a, a game from two thousand released in two thousand fourteen that looks worse than Dune two thousand. But they've made some uh, they've made some changes to uh, the game. They have added, um, they, the re they've completely overhauled the resource management, especially for food and whatnot. Um, they, they've made the map 16 times larger, which means that the increase in gravity allows all your units to learn the Kaioken attack, which is brilliant. <laughs> um, and their engine does compile. I tried, I tried doing that, but, uh, it, if you have a version of Lua higher than 5.2, it just doesn't like your include files for whatever freaking reason. And it just pukes because pants. Because fuck you, Try that's why. Yeah, because I, I, I compiled it with Clang. I compiled it with GCC. GCC just shits its pants. Uh, LLVM actually gets to the end. It's like, yeah, you're missing this, but I have it. No, you're missing it. All right, well, guess I'm not playing you. Wasn't going to do it anyways. <laughs> so up next, we force Ven to play D&D or... &D, some facsimile thereof. See how that turns out. This is a time for books. This is a time for Chairquisition. We're reviewing Sword Coast Legends by Endspace and Hasbro. It is a Dungeons and Dragons style RPG. Actually, it's a branded Dungeons and Dragons game. Uh, developed in Unity, and it costs you $40. Jesus fucking Christ. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, what is it? Set in the lush and vibrant words, world of the Forgotten Realms that's been retconned too many times to even be recognizable, Sword Coast Legends offers an all-new way to enjoy the time-tested magic of playing Dungeons & Dragons as a stared, shared storytelling experience. It really doesn't. And, of course, they did send us the keys. We gotta tell that for the U.S. disclosure, or else we're gonna get sued! So let's cue up the chairquisition. One chair means that it's garbage. Two chairs means math. Three chairs means that's pretty good. Four chairs means that it's maze balls. And we also got our categories: O oh, Doom, makes with the working, shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So you you want to see what happens when you force Ven to play D and D? This is what happens. How does it work? All right, let's talk about this on the Ubuntu fourteen oh four LTS, octa core eighty one fifty nine eighty powered four K display box of business. Well. I'm getting about 40 to 50 FURPS, with everything on Yellow Swag Dorito at 1080p. That drops to a solid 23 to 30 FURPS at 2160, aka Ultra HD, also aka 4K. You can expect um, somewhere 12 or 14 FURPS when you're outside of Kyozen, sometimes, sometimes Let's not. Get Who knows? I mean, it depends on <laughs> if you go into a dungeon, out of a dungeon. Uh, and it's a unithread! Well, at least on this end, here in AMD land, it pegs one core. But maybe, uh, things will be different on Team Blue, but over here on Team it's, Red, it, it, I, I, I gotta say that, um, it does get four chairs, everything does work. It's a, it's a one core wonder on Team Blue, anyways. On the i7-6700K, uh, a, um, NVIDIA 980, uh, Fedora 2164 bit powered box of business. Um, yeah, I get, I get more or less similar frame rates to what Ben's getting. Maybe about five FPS difference because my CPU's clocked a bit higher. Um, yeah, it, it performs like ass at 4K. I don't, I don't know what kind of optimizations they did, but it doesn't look like <laughs> they did really they any because it's a uh, Unity game. It's a Unity shark. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I mean, besides that, everything works. They, they use SDL for a bunch of back end stuff. So yeah, four chips. Yeah, you see, I played this game during the Head Start early access thing that they had going on. I didn't have any major problems. If the release version was actually on par with that, I would have given it four chairs. But unfortunately, it's not. I'm running Corora 2164-bit on the Amiga, which is packing a an AMD 8370E overclocked at 4.2 gigahertz and a GTX 970 Strix running the latest NVIDIA beta. And if I push the resolution bef- beyond... Uh, 1280 by 800 the ocean in the title screen it goes black like pitch black that's right push if i push the shadow quality uh, if i put it on high if it's on ultra it's fine if i put it on high the clouds in the sky on that very same screen will start to flicker like crazy at 1080p the game will go anywhere from 40 to 70 frames per second with the exact same scene with nothing happening on screen. So for me, it gets two chairs. All right, so that's three chairs for mixed with the working. Up next is Shiny and Sounds. Ben. Um, I, I'm audio listeners, I apologize, but I must show you this. <laughs> this, this is what it looks like with everything on 11, including that's a jagged ass the, sword. The, 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 there, there'll be a link in the show notes, so you don't have to worry about that too much. It'll definitely be a fucking thing. That's shadows are a bit atrocious, and don't get me started on those cookie cutter trees that populate the outdoor environment organs. Yes, person that thought they got away with it, you didn't, Brad. I noticed, and the, the shadows. I have not seen jaggies and shadows like that. This is like 2003. It's pretty miserable. Hell, even the character models, they come off as a bit low rent. And that's only amplified by the wanted use of in-engine cutscenes. Where the lips, you can't tell if they're moving. There's too much pixelated shit there. But let's get to the sounds. The voice acting, while competent. It really genuinely comes across as disconnected. It's like a eh, voice file, voice file, voice file. You, you never feel that anyone is having a genuine conversation. It doesn't look great. And I, it comes at a heavy price tag of why it doesn't look great. But I'll tell you more about that in the fun section. But it does work. It does visualize and it does soundualize. So I'll give it two chairs. Uh, I, I mean, I, I agree with Ben on the whole dialogue thing. And they really, really need to fix the the bit where every time you click on something, right, got it, on my way, for victory, that garbage. Uh, it's kind of annoying. The music is already. get you my know, point? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. I see what you did there because you stabbed him. I'm going to stab myself. Anyways, um, yeah, there isn't really a big graphical improvement over, say, games like uh, Temple like uh, Path of Exile, Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition, or even if you want to go back a couple, like almost seven years ago now, uh, Temple of Elemental Evil. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't get any of the graphical glitches that Pedro is going to talk about. Um, but I mean, it still doesn't look fantastic. It, it looks mediocre, passable at best. And for a game with the amount of money Hasbro's throwing behind it and with the amount of promotion, I, I, don't, I don't really see it getting too many points for that. I'll give it two cheers. It works. Yeah, you may remember Ven mentioned the uh, in-engine rendered cutscenes. Those, for me, would just be some random color on screen because I could not see them at all. Hey. There were also when uh, when you start the story mode and you were going through that whole dream sequence, I would get giant fucking weapons obscuring the screen uh, it's called a great the... sword for a reason pedro <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing my character was also holding a great sword and it didn't fucking do Your that character it had was plus the 10 halfling, yolo the halfling <laughs> bellamy Half- he his sword was just taking up half of the screen Bad and, it was... uh... and not just that there were also blown out or just simply missing colors w- wherever the sword wasn't obscuring the screen. If you watched me attempting to play the game on Thursday on the live stream, 
you saw exactly what I mean. If you didn't, you can always go to twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast and watch the previous VODs. Uh, you'll see exactly what it is. Uh, one thing I also noticed is the sound spawns two sound streams, and also one for the intro movies. It gives you underruns up the wazoo, and an SDL one for the rest of the game. They have managed to fuck this up so much that for me, I can't say that it works. It simply does not work. One chair. Ugh, so that's one chair for Shiny and Sounds. Up next is the controls, Ven. I don't know what these two heathens are on about, but the controls... <laughs> saving grace. No one saving grace of this thing. Are logically laid out. Your WASD moves your camera about... Well, it moves you up, down, left, and right on the map. If you want to do the spinny rotations, right-click, you spin around and all that. Movement, left-click, go here, go here, go here, go here. Torchlight, too. Hated that, too. But it all worked. Um, you hit C, and that brings up your inventory and all that business, and you balance that out. Uh, J-Man will probably expound on this, but it's something I thought before he even wrote it down. He just beat me to it, and he totally did, was... They're going to put this on consoles, and I w want to make so much popcorn to see how that's going to fucking translate. But nothing's broken. I don't know what these yahoos are on about, so I'm going to give it four chairs. I, I mean, nothing's broken. The like the button presses do what you'd expect them to do. But the main th there, there are a couple problems with the implementation of the controls. Number one, the AI is fucking rock stupid, and... Like they, because it's not actually turn based, and if you turn the AI off, you have to micromanage everything, which means you're mashing on the space bar every fucking five seconds. Um, and if you leave the tactics on, the the people take the right actions they're supposed to, but they stand perfectly still, which means that your archers and your spellcasters get killed to death by rats. Um, and considering like micromanaging and moving people around the dungeon to better position them to fill their role is the crux of the game. You're not going to win any points for that. Um, and yeah, like like Ven said, like this apparently this is supposed to be on consoles. I have I uh, apparently it supports a controller. I have no idea how the hell that would work. Console optimized my butt. Two chairs. Yeah. So Ven actually lied a little bit when he said that he didn't know what us Edens were on about, because I tried to play Dungeon Crawl with both Ven and Jordan on Thursday night. Oh, and I knew your whenever, version was busted, son. I had nothing to do with yeah, my experience. Yeah, whenever we entered one of those randomly generated dungeons, I simply couldn't move. I would click on the ground for my character to move, and it wouldn't budge. But Pedro, came Pedro, close Pedro, to Pedro, me, Pedro, Pedro, it's not like you, you clearly never tried to uninstall it and reinstall it. Oh, that's the thing. I did. I uninstalled it. I removed every uh, every single folder that this game created in my system in order to reset everything. I also sent an email to the devs telling them to just fucking reset my account because everything's fucking busted. And I linked them to the VODs that are currently on the Twitch on LGC's Twitch TV channel. The Twitch. Uh, Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm drunk. Give me a break. But they never replied to me, so they're not getting any points for that. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, I tried playing that dungeon crawl with Ven and Jordan. I simply couldn't move. And one other thing when it comes to controls is that I tried to play... Uh, when I was playing, they said that if you hold the alt key, you would highlight all the interactable objects on screen. That's bad practice when it comes to Linux. And the fact that you can't rebind that specific key at all, it dings you another chair for that. So one chair. All right, so that's two chairs for controls. And finally, fun. I wonder what Ven's going to give it. It's going to be brilliant. Point and click Victor Vran with inferior graphics at twice the price? Question mark. What's not to love? Seriously, who knew a mediocre action RPG could capture the very essence of Dungeons and Dragons. I didn't know what the hell a D&D &D was before I played Sword Coast Legends, but after two hours, well actually three now, I can proudly say I still fucking don't. But um, what I do know 
is people were expecting the ability to construct areas, design, you know, blueprints, create scripts and DM modes, you know, like that game from 2003. I, I forget what it's called, but it was a thing. Neverwinter Nights. Yeah. I thought, I thought you meant Unreal Tournament. Right. <laughs> You gave those people a random dungeon generator that you can just basically throw shit in and move it around. Who's this game for, Brad? Seriously. The D&D crowd, those that are not in denial, seem to dislike it. And CRPG and ARPG fans like myself find it fucking hella lacking, hella mediocre. It's like, meh. But, you know, I'm sorry. I genuinely thought that I, I was going to be tooth and nail forced to like learn the mechanics of D&D and Jordan's going to explain all this shit to me and Pedro's going because even when we were just hanging out in a multiplayer room where Pedro was just like stuck and couldn't fucking move it was hilarious as you might imagine they were rattling off all the stat shit and I was like nerds but I was like okay if we get into this I'll learn this and bother and all this None of that ever happened. I mean, it's just not into this fucking game. And it really seems the only people that we go, but you need to go through the stages of acceptance. And I don't need to. I I wanted to learn about D&D a bit more because I heard it's for people that don't understand the complexities of Warhammer. And I wanted to learn more about their world, but this did not deliver it to me. And... At that price, man, thirty wet stinky caches for something that thirty nine ninety nine. No, it's forty. Forty wet stinky caches. You'll have more fun with the torchlight too if you're like me, because, uh, well, even if you're a D and D fan, like I said, unless you're in denial, I'm gonna give this one share. I'm gonna go back to it. I'm, I even gave it an extra on last night because I want to find redeeming quality in this bullshit, and I couldn't. But speaking of denial. Listen, man, I am a Cambodian unicorn, and you cannot tell me otherwise. No, but, um, I mean, okay, I, I've been a D&D fan for 15 odd years now. Uh. This is supposed to be an adaptation of this. D&D 5th edition rules, it's not. Um, let, 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 let's just, let's just put that on the table. It uses the same language, it uses a lot of the same terminology, but it is not, like, Dungeons and Dragons by any stretch of the imagination. Taken as it is, though, it's not a bad RPG by any stretch. I didn't hate playing it. It's not great but it's not terrible either i mean yeah i was i was a bit upset that it, oh it's not straight five, eight, Look, like said, i was expecting i was i was expecting something like neverwinter nights which shit the like, moon um, <laughs> no um i and mo most people who are reviewing this game on steam were like it's not dnd i'm so upset blah 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 it's supposed to be a computerized equivalent of it the 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 fifth edition rule set doesn't really translate well to a CRPG. There's a lot of like requirement for DM interaction and their whole methodology is ruling not rules. So you you can't oh, really translate Can this into a something? system that actually requires rules. That computers are logic based machines. They need rules. Um, uh, I do want to ask yeah, you a question, like a like a legitimate question. Okay, sure. Go nuts. Uh, it seems like people uh, like two things because you both of you know a fuckload more about D and D than I do. Like I said, that's one of the things that pissed me off is because I never got to learn anything extra about D&D. Um, the two biggest complaints I was reading about is you can't pause during an online multiplayer. Yeah, that was, that was a bit of me. And you. Pe people were pissed off about that, and they were also pissed off about cooldowns. Can you explain that to me in a way that oh, would make sense? Okay, okay, sure. Um, how D&D basically works is you have a certain number of things you can do per day, and then you have to rest, which basically breaks up the day, gives you a chance to heal up so you don't get slaughtered right off the bat. This, in an attempt to increase game pace and allow you to play longer and longer and longer, does away with that. So in order in order to accommodate for that, instead of having, like in Pillars of Eternity or Baldur's Gate, there's like a button that says rest, and there's a chance you'll have a random encounter, but it will recharge all this stuff. That doesn't happen in this, so... You need you need a way to compensate for that, so that's where the cooldowns come in. I didn't really mind that that much. Mm -hmm. I mean, it already sort of exists within the tabletop rules, but not to the degree that uh, it does in this game. And on it, honestly, the main the main problem I have with it is D and D is inherently a turn based game, and trying to translate it to an action RPG, you either have to go full tilt ARPG and just completely embrace that. There's there's a game called Forgotten Realms Demon Stone that actually did that incredibly well. Yep. Or you, um, or you do the Baldur's Gate thing, where you do turn-based, where you can pause it after every round finishes, and you can queue up your attacks and your spells and whatever, and redo it. This doesn't exist in that game. 
Uh, the other the other problem people were complaining about were the fact that Neverwinter Nights give you like the full SDK. You could sign entire campaigns, levels, and whatnot. This game does not have that, and a lot of people were upset because they were expecting you know Neverwinter Nights for fifth edition D and D. That's not the case. But going back to the game proper, it does kind of bother me that the like death doesn't really have any consequence in this unless everyone dies because mm-hmm. you can revive your characters, which again exists in the tabletop game, but in the actual video game space, it just makes it so that it's tedious and it kind of removes any tension from any real fights. Um, this does not capture the D and D experience. If 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 you want like if you want this like Slave Pits of Undercities, the classic tournament module, you're not going to get it in this game. But if you want a solidish action RPG that has some D and D language and has a bit of D and D feel, Pick this is it's 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 not great. Um, if you want if you want to actually play D and D, go download Labyrinth Ward. It's free. It's a tabletop RPG. Play it. It's it's great. Um, if or if you want a more video game experience, go back to Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition or Pillars of Eternity, even though that has a real time thing as well. I didn't mind it. I enjoyed my time playing with it. It's certainly not without its issues. It's not a perfect game, but it's fun-ish. We'll give it three cheers. Yeah, it wasn't fun-ish at all for me. It's fundamentally broken. I'm not alone in this either, because there are quite a few people, at least on the bug report forums for the um, edsonswordcoast.com forward slash forums. If you go there, there's quite a few people that have the same problem that I do. Uh, if you look in the Steam forums, you'll see a couple of more people that have the exact same problems that I do. And I would very much like to comment on the whole whether or not this is a D&D game or not. I even have my D20s right here. And but do you have your I D10s can't. for thief skills? You don't. I, you don't. Uh, I can't. I can't comment on whether or not this game fits within the dnd realm or it doesn't because i couldn't play it i spent all basically all the free time i had that i could have been playing this game i spent it playing the original neverwinter nights and that's a much better game to this day it takes a lot of work to get the native linux version working on current distros but it's totally worth it it, like Jordan said, it has the tool set. You can literally create your own adventure with... You can set some DM hooks. You can literally create anything and everything your mind it, can it, it, it is the full SDK for the game. That's It is everything you could ever need to make an entirely new game out of that one. And it was released well, Pedro, I understand that a lot of people think that the DM mode is lacking, and a lot of people think that they will release additional tools as DLC. They probably will, because it's the kind of, the kind of culture we live in right now in the video games industry, is that you sell, like, if a video game was a hamburger, you sell the buns, and if you We've want the burger the and the cheese, so. well, then you're going to have to pay extra for the DLC. Because fuck you, that's why. One chair. Alright, All right, so that's one chair for fun. Totals up for one chair. I mean, okay. There 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 is a good game buried in here. Let, let, let's let's be real. It it I want to that's... like it, but god damn it, N Space, you are making it hard. There is so much crap piled on this. The DM mode is entirely lacking. You don't get to actually design your dungeons. You just get to sort of inhabit the denizens. It's a that's randomly generated dungeon. Aren't you happy yeah. for that? No, I'm not. I'm not Brad. You should be grateful. You're entitled. Yeah, no. See, I you know, D&D fans can be a little bit entitled. Let, let's let's be real. I like I said, I've been in the fandom for 15 years. I've seen people flip shit over editions. That kind of happens. But <laughs> and I mean, I mean luck with 4th edition. For four, for $40, <laughs> this is not a good game. If it were $15, $20, I could maybe see recommending it, but for the price being asked, no. Nope, 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 nope. Well, I'm going to ask both of your opinions on this. I mean, what I'm going to say and my final thoughts for this, roll the dice for a refund. Hope you get it. Save, save versus suck. Yeah. And yeah. what really disappointed me was I even like every time everyone knows Vin loves uh, turn-based strategy, right? But every time a new we get a new turn-based strategy, I, I don't go and just like, fuck. I was like, okay, maybe this is going to be the one. This is going to be the one. I, I, this is going to be the one that like blows my mind and I'm going to get into it. 
didn't really know. I mean, I, I knew what the fuck a D and D was. Come on, let's be honest with you. You can't be a Linux user and not know that. Um, stereotyping. <laughs> I was kind of it thinking there reason. was going to be some type of environment where you know Jordan, Pedro, and I we can get together and do some DM type shit, and I would actually learn about the culture, environment, and all that. This game is incapable of providing that fucking experience for somebody who doesn't know shit about D and D. That's me. This is a subpar, shitty-looking action RPG at best, a really-ass boring CRPG at worst. Uh, P-Man? Yeah, I wanted to like this game. Like Jordan, I really wanted to like this game for the, the D&D CRPG, ARPG implementation, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I can't. Uh, it Neverwinter Nights was released in 2003, and it's a much better game than this. Uh, if the simple prospect of running into every single little problem that I did doesn't send you running to the hills, then at least the $40 price tag should. Do not buy this game. Yeah. Unfortunately, in space, you, you, you get some points for effort, but effort doesn't cut it when you actually have to fork out. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's my favorite segment of LGC Weekly. It's the hate mail. If you don't know how to get in touch with us, shame on you. It's pretty easy. Come on, man. Gamecast.com. Yeah. Contact button. It's fill out the form. That's it. Unless, of course, you're trying to promote a game or a crowdfunding campaign. If you are, we need to play your shit before. Hey, Pedro, we Pedro, talk about uh, it. I think I might have sent yeah. you like two of those this week. Yeah. Yeah, you did. And I've. Kinda sent emails back and I never heard from them again. So I don't know. You mean it's astounding? Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. So the very first one comes from Rudy, and he's talking about um, that prison escape simulator thing. And he says it's a shame you guys don't seem to like Prison Architect. That's the name, right? My bad. Uh, much Drop because it's fun simulator. on the few games that did the whole early access thing right. Sure, it took them three years, but they communicated well with their audience during that period. They had a consistent release schedule accompanied by a fun update video every month. It was very stable from the get-go and had a Linux version from day one. The dark theme doesn't bother me at all. Uh, all that much, even though I don't like to what I hear about the US prison system. But come on, it's just a game. On top of that, escape mode, which they added for the 1.0 release, where you get to escape your own prison or random ones from the Steam Workshop, is pretty fun to play. Now, here's the thing. I don't think that the reason we don't like Prison Architect has anything to do with the theme, nor its social slash political implications. Personally, I don't like it because it's a sim game. It attempts to be more along the lines of Theme Hospital instead of SimCity, but it's that kind of genre that I honestly couldn't care less about. Oh, come on, man. There's a car mm. dealership simulator that came out. <laughs> you're, and you, can, you can always play Euro Truck Simulator and practice murdering your prostitutes. Oh, man. Did you, I don't know. Did, did you see that video of the kid? That had, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was like, oh, that's kind of neat, man. I bet you can kill, murder a lot of prostitutes in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, no! I mean, like some, of, like some of the technical elements of the, oh god, I've become blurry again. Oh, well, I'll just start dancing and hopefully it will fix it itself. But some of the elements of the game are interesting, like uh, how like bad prisoners are determined and whatnot. But that's more from like a software development angle. Um, it's it's one of those games that if I if I ever bought it, I'd play it for about fifteen minutes. Go, all right, that's a thing, and never touch it again. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that really kept me away from that was. Uh... P-Man, correct me if I'm right, but wasn't it like 80 fucking quid buy-in price? Uh, it was pretty expensive during early access, but I think right now it's sub-20 bucks. I'm not sure. <clears throat> and I'm not really getting into the, like, the whole moral issue, but um, what I've learned, I mean, I've been in the state almost a decade, oh, the states, not the state, <laughs> is it's kind of fucked up, man, because like 90% of the... Uh, Criminals here are nonviolent offenders that were just busted for a little bit of greenery, but I'm next! Squirrel, fish, frog, lynx, 
Make up your minds! <laughs> if that is your real name, son. Hey, I came here because I saw it in a post. I mean, he's talking about the uh, steamy links, because uh, well, we had the empties on, and he was so awesome, and he yep. showed us the aerial controller. Just if you need any feedback on the show, comma, here it is what I prefer. Uh, chop it up into Cola. subtitled videos. <laughs> edit it. Uh, edit it in a way. Burr, Morty. <laughs> oh, yeah. Put it up your pocket. Burr, <laughs> Yeah, to the point that and removes anything that doesn't contribute substantially to the topic. As a minimum alternative, write a short guide with minute links in the description as navigation help. Um, hey, man. Hey, Brad. You're awesome, son. You know, uh, that's some good hate mail. Uh, thank you for the solid input. I mean, the thing is... What you watched on the YouTubes, and uh, we got a lot more views uh, thanks to Empty. Um, yeah. Showing off the link and the Areola controller. A lot of people want to tune in and check that out. But it, that was a condensed version of our normal six hour long live stream. And at the end of the day, take that shot. We're an audio podcast, and that's where 99% of our traffic comes from. What you see on the YouTubes is like a condensed video dump for the really sick, twisted mofos out there that want to see our face organs. But that said, that said, Brad, your points are hella valid. And if we were trying to, you know, like draw in a certain demographic of jump cut, hey, colors, yay, ah, oh, blur, pewter pie, squirrel. <laughs> um, if we were trying to draw in that demographic, we probably would, and I can't get a clear picture, I mean, without, like, fudging the numbers, but I can look at who actually watches our YouTube videos, and to significant numbers, they are right around 25, I want to say 50, but normally it's about 48, where it's a significant number, and say two 48-year-olds, and they're usually IT professionals in the business. They're not blinky colors, jump cuts, squirrel. <laughs> no. You got some thoughts? And, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, really, really, the structure of the podcast has sort of developed organically over the course of three years, and I mean, we may take some of this into consideration in the future, I mean, but it, uh, for, for, it, for now, Ven, Ven's right, this is an audio podcast. It's primarily. easier to digest what's going on if you close your eyes. It, it is, and it, I mean, the entire thing takes the, the course of like a conversation where, I mean, we're rapidly switching topics, but it's still a conversation, and that's really it. But up next... Go! This is from Daniel B. And he's talking about Indivisible, that game from Lab Zero. And they have that Indiegogo going on. And he asks, with a month left, will they make their goal? Then you have an entire spiel about this, don't you? Hang on, I gotta find their um, Indiegogo. Where's that? You you just passed it. First link. First link. Yoink! Google, stop doing your job too well! <laughs> Okay, they um, not too bad. Um, four hundred and forty-six thousand what stinkies out, out of, of the way there with twenty days ago. left. One point yeah. five million. Um, this is from our friends at a uh, Lab Zen, right? And, quote unquote friends. And, uh, well, they made good fuck, on their promise. fuck buddies, whatever. Right, however you, <laughs> however you want to fucking look at it, and they did make good on their promise. I mean, they got the uh, Z engine. Now is working on Linux and Civic did anyways. Thanks to you, Civic, you yeah. can check this out. Download the Linux. I mean, we were the first ones to do the Linux um, testing for that and all that business. It's a thing, but will it make it? Um, if they do, I'll be fuck mothering shocked. I, I'm not saying it's a bad looking game, but at 1.5 million, that's a bit steep. With an additional two million in backing, if funded, this kind of comes across as market research versus fund our game. But then you need to think about who backs projects on the Kickstarters and the Indies. And I'm guessing, and I'm completely pulling these numbers out of my ass, organ, that ninety percent of those people who back projects like this are PC gamers. And you know what? As PC gamers, and I, I'm including our Mac brothers and sisters, and our Windows brothers and sisters, 
we're sick and fucking tired of paying for console ports that have a nasty habit of being first priority once something is funded. And we've seen this with Soma. We've seen this with Batman and several other Lord titles. Lord even. Yeah, and oh, yeah. what did we do this week? Uh, Sword Coast Legends. I mean, Sword kinda... Coast Legends. That, that that wasn't really. Yeah, that was a I mean, it's just Rex like shite backported from console builds. You know, I completely wish Lab Zero nothing but the best in success in the future ventures. But I don't. It's just the phrasing of this. If you look at the top, I mean, it is PS4, Xbox One. It the last three. All the three, correct me if I'm right, I, I want your thoughts on this, ladies and gentlemen. Win, Mac, and Linux, those, am I wrong in saying those are going to be the three type of people who would fund this project? Pretty much. But I will give them credit for one thing, going back to something we brought up in the Steam segment. At no point do they actually offer a early access beta thing for their backers. So if they do the double dip, I mean... And any anyone who got the game is probably going to get a key, or anyone who backed the game at this point is going to get a key, and anyone who funds it later via Steam Early Access is going to get the same level of stuff. But at least there's no false promise of, hey, you know, you're going to get this exclusive Early Access game, but we're going to throw it on Steam because we need money. And to be perfectly honest, well, that's the thing. They are being very, very honest when it comes to the whole crowdfunding thing, because they're saying right off the bat, we need 1.5 mil from you guys in order to have another 2 mil come our way so we can make a decent, full-fledged game. Does that not and come off as market research? Because that's not a $3 it, million it, dollar it does. It does. It, it, it does. It definitely does. I mean, but it, then again, it just smacks of like when the Kumbuntu phone came out. And they, yeah. they oh, did yeah. their thing. Uh, how many people want to buy this? They knew... Uh, the, Everyone behind Canonical knew that it was never going to get funded, but they wanted to do market research. They want to see how many people were interested. Kind of like uh, Shenmue 2, son? 3? Yeah, uh, yeah shit. definitely. But I'll give them that. They're at least being honest with that, and they're laying it out up front, saying, this is what we're doing, this is the money we're getting after the fact, and the game will probably cost a hell of a lot more to develop if it is a genuine game that will be put into sure. you know the whole kind of love build thing where money is not the core focus and developers will actually build it up to be the best possible game that they can that they can for the most now, part uh one 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 final thing i'd like to mention is that at least they're not saying well we only need 1.5 million dollars to produce yeah. the game because it's going to cost a lot more than that and hopefully they're not going to pull another skull girls where they have multiple indiegogo campaigns and a kickstarter to raise the capital as a result of this seems legit yeah. so let's cue the music you can always find us around 9 30 eastern standard moon time that's about to change but if you're always curious just search time athens georgia 9:30. Googs will sort it out for you. I'm Vin Stone at Vin Stone on the Twitter Nets plus Vin Stone on the G Pluses. I'm Jordan Svung. You can find me dungeoning and dragoning on Twitter at The Burning Fool or plus Jordan Svung on Google Plus. I am the incredible Plage Marizzo, which didn't get to Plage Marize anything this week. So, Good. I'm Pedro Mateos. You can find me at Unaccounted for on Twitter or plus Pedro Mateos on Google Plus. Yeah, he's going to have to hang out there for a moment because I had to look up. Um, can we just all agree <laughs> that a symmetrical vibration glitch would make an awesome band name? <laughs> symmetrical yeah, sure. vibration sure. glitch. Peace! Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> Hello, Clint Brad! We all symmetrical vibration glitch! Jordan, you're not being PC, bro. You're not being very PC. I am being PCP, though. Dig it. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag life insurance. Five dudes. <laughs>